the gift, the gift he gives to know us, see ourselves as other seers. So you're asking there essentially, what would I prefer other people to think about me? And they're in charge of that. Um, I'm only in charge of me. If someone calls me he, they're usually trying to make some pointed remark. Why would you call someone like me he? Yeah. I'm wearing a dress, I'm presenting as pretty femme. Um, yeah, I'm not a blokey bloke. I only have one legal name, Nori but uh, a lot of people can't get their head around that, so they made up the name Norrie May Welby. It's a joke, May Welby, yeah. When I originally dumped the family name, I was being independent, and because gays weren't accepted by straight people then, so I really wanted to, I don't know, forge an existence outside of the patriarchy, hegemony, standard um, nuclear family thing. -o. I was seven when I left Scotland, but I, I was a kid when I arrived in Perth. Well, I was a migrant and had a funny accent. That, I guess, isolated me a little bit initially. Um, for, a, for a queenie, effeminate um, bookworm, yeah, I, I would have probably been driven to suicide. That's what happened to most people like me in those days. So that's when the, the act of the bashings were going on. Young men would go out and for sport would beat a homosexual to death and get away with it. I think the 1970s in Australia were like that. Uh, as a kid, I, I imagined being various characters. Some of them weren't even human, they were from Krypton. <laughs> Um, and some of them are male and some of them are female. And I didn't think, I can't imagine being um, Supergirl because I, I, I have a penis. Um, in the same way, I didn't think I can't be Supergirl because I don't come from Krypton. Um. I didn't, I don't have uh, an essential, unchanging view of my gender very often, except maybe when I was on hormones when I was a trainee. Yeah, I heard some sex change proclaiming from on high to a group of young transsexuals, uh, teenagers on hormones, going, you know, if you, if you not have the surgery, then you're, you're just, um, you're just a dress up, you're just wasting your time, just to dress up. This outside presentation isn't serious, it's not real, it's your transvestite, as if there's a huge difference between someone that's had a sex change and um, someone that's maybe seen by the rest of the community as a heterosexual man that cross-dresses at weekends. There's a difference of degree, but is there a real difference in, in quality there? Um, who's to judge? And so, oh, you're, you're more authentic than you and your, your experience is more acceptable than yours. Huge pressure. Um, so I did it, had the sex change. I would like a society where people aren't under the same pressures I am and maybe someone in the same situation will decide to keep their bits or whatever. I want it to be more optional. I, I don't like the idea that people are pressured to, to have surgery, to, to be their normal gender. My result, physically, I'm, I'm new to it. Does that mean to you? Um, well, like a pets, <laughs> they're neutered or spayed. Um, neuter it means uh, not one or the other, not either. And I like that idea of, of not having to say, I'm, I'm with that class of humans, I'm, I'm, I'm versus that class of humans. Uh, no, I'm not one or the other. I'm part of every group of humans. I may well be.
everyone is a minority of one. Uh, we all speak our own languages. <laughs> um, and it's important to maintain integrity um, as, as an individual without having to identify with the group, without having to judge yourself based on how you compare to someone else. That's, that's not about being yourself. Style is the art of being yourself on purpose. <laughs>